Shri Gauranga Nityananda Shri Advaita Chandra Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrindam Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Vrindavan Shri Govinda Gopinath Madana Mohan We're continuing with chapter 31 of the Jaiva Dharma with the discussion of Madhurya Ras. We left off with the sentence Shuddha-sattva arises by bhakti, whose source is the mercy of Guru, Krishna, and the Vaishnavas. When it arises, it makes the heart bright. Guru Goswami continues, It gives me happiness to give instructions to a person who is qualified as you. Do you have any other question? Vijay Kumar asks, Previously, you mentioned that the Nayak, the hero, Krishna, was of four types. Uh, Guru Goswami says, yes, four types of heroes are present in Krishna. The Dirodat, the Dira Lalita, the Dira Shant, and the Dirodat. These are um, different ways uh, Krishna... Uh, shows his love towards the gopis of Braj. Uh, the contrary bhavs seen in these heroes operate according to Krishna's desire. Sometimes he will act in one way and sometimes he will act in another. But it is Krishna who is the repository of all rasas of the hero and is the possessor of a chincha shakti. There is one secret, astonishing quality in Krishna, who is endowed with the four types of heroes. This can be understood by a person of extraordinary qualification. That he can act in one way uh, and then act in a different way, in a playful way, in a very stern way, in a, uh, different ways in which he re may relate with those who are in love with him. But he remains the hero, the Nayak means he is the object of affection or love for all. But especially we're discussing the gopis of Braj here in Madhurya Ras. Vijay Kumar says, since you have been merciful in all matters, then please explain, Please explain this also. While saying this, Vijay Kumar fell at his guru's feet with tears in his eyes. Goshami picked him up and embraced him with tears in his eyes. He spoke in a choked voice. Both became very emotional in discussing this high uh, and, and most confidential subject matter. Vijay became emotional because how fortunate he was to receive this from his Gurudev. And his Gurudev felt, how fortunate I am to have a disciple like this who can receive these instructions. So Gopal Goswami says, there are two types of heroes in Madhurya Ras. Uh, Krishna as the Pati, the husband, or Krishna as the Upapati, the Paramar. Vijay Kumar said, Prabhu, Krishna is our eternal master. He is our Pati, our Lord, our husband. Uh, since he is Pati, why is there a relationship as Upapati? That is, we always feel that Krishna is our husband in Madhurya Ras, but yet there may be what is called Upapati, meaning the uh, Paramar, relationship with Krishna. Goswami says, this is a deep secret. <clears throat> Spirit, spiritual things are a secret gem. But Madhurya Rasa Parakiya nature is a very special gem. It is the kastuba of all other gems. Vijay Kumar said, the devotees take shelter of Madhurya Rasa and worship Krishna as husband or pati. What is the deep meaning of Krishna as the Upapati, <clears throat> the paramour lover? <clears throat> because everyone feels uh, 
Krishna is my husband, or Krishna is my the object of my love. Uh, even if they are married to another in Braj, Krishna is the object of love. Uh, not their so-called husband, but Krishna. He's, he steals everyone's heart. Goswami says, if one joins with the impersonal aspect of the Supreme Tatra, there is no rasa. First of all, let's rid ourselves of this impersonalistic idea. God is a person. Krishna is a person. He is the Supreme Person. And he acts out many different loving relationships with all his devotees. That is the nature of love. To enact out pastimes of uh, affection and service and love in a multitude, unlimited. Krishna is unlimited. So in an un unlimited way. But so let us remove this idea of God in an impersonal aspect because there we find no rasa. Just a cessation of suffering. The Vedic statement, raso vai saha, the Lord is ras. The impersonal aspect is inferior since it lacks happiness completely. As much as the personal aspect of the Lord manifests, to that degree, rasa also appears. Krishna is identified with ras. He is sweetness personified. And the more we realize God in his personal aspect, we realize the sweetness of that relationship. The Ras in Vatsalya is superior, oh, excuse me, superior to the concept Ishvara, Lord as Master Shanta Ras, there is the sense of Dasya Ras. Those gradations have been given before, but to uh, reaffirm, there is Shanta Ras, then there is Dasya Ras, the ras of sakya is superior to that, friendship. Then there is vatsalya, parental affection. But superior to all of them is madhurya. Just as one sees progressive superiority in the various rasas, so in madhurya ras we can understand parakya is superior to swakya. Swakya mean, meaning married concept, Parakya means the concept of Krishna as my lover. There, that is the higher, that is what's being mentioned. This parakya, Krishna as one's lover, because it, it requires various types of uh, um, encounters to, to uh, meet with Krishna. It is, Krishna is not met with so freely. So the heart is always thinking of Krishna. When will I meet with my lover? When will I meet with Krishna? Uh, how can we arrange for such meeting? All of these things stimulate that love to the highest level. There are two tattvas, self and others. The quality of being fixed in self is called the atmaram, pleasure in the self, atmarama, pleasure in the atma. There is no distinct companion for Ras in this. Still, it, it, that is almost an impersonalistic concept. Atmaram, self-satisfied. I need no one else. But the devotee knows there's not only one, there's two. There is Krishna and there is the living being. Though this quality of Atmaram exists in Krishna eternally, Pararama, Enjoyment from others who are different from himself also exists in him eternally. So Krishna can be said to be the Atmaram, also he is self-satisfied, but there is another thing about Krishna. Para-ram. He takes pleasure from others. He enjoys the loving exchange with others. Self-satisfaction is one thing. But the uh, exchange of love is certainly superior to that. And Krishna relishes that, exchanging love with his devotees. On the other hand, his pastimes show him as the ultimate parama, in the parakya relationship, in the relationship of having a lover, the highest uh, ras is experienced by Krishna also, not only by the devotee, but Madhuri Ras is the highest Ras for Krishna also. He also enjoys. It is not that Krishna is just going through the motions, 
Krishna enjoys this type of ras with his devotees. When by attraction, the Nayak meets uh, the heroine, though a completely different para, Krishna unmarried, gopis married to someone else, an astonishing ras arises. That is called parakya ras. There's a broad spectrum from Atmaram to parakya madhurya ras. Going towards Atmaram nature, ras becomes dry. Going towards parakya ras fully blossoms. When Krishna, the hero, parakya can never be, when Krishna is the hero, parakya can never be uh, detested. It is the most beautiful thing. It is not something that some persons with uh, objection because of moral, moralistic thinking think it to be something ugly. No, here it is said, it is the most beautiful of things. It is the highest expression of love between Krishna and his devotees, primarily the gopis of Braj. So it can never be detested. When an ordinary jiva becomes the hero, one considers morality. But with Krishna, that, this is not the question, moral or immoral. Krishna is free to do as he likes. Nothing uh, uh, restricts Krishna's pleasure and nothing should restrict Krishna's pleasure. So, uh, Rupa Goswami has said that when the Upapati is disregarded, as is seen in ordinary moral, moralistic Shastra, that is understood to refer to someone else, a materialistic hero or, or male dominant person. But it does not refer to Krishna. He is the spiritual avatar, the source of all avatar, and the, the source of all loving exchanges. He is the taste of concentrated rasa. He, he appeared in order to taste this concentrated rasa of loving exchange with his devotees. Vijay Kumar said, I will be successful if you delineate the tattva describing then the qualities of pati and upapati. Goswami says the pati or the husband is the one who accepts a young girl in marriage. Krishna also has his uh, married wives. They're primarily seen in Dwarka. Vijay Kumar says, what are the qualities of the upapati and the parakeya then? Goswami says the person who seemingly transgresses dharma out of a passion because of a desire to possess a girl married to another man and who is the only object of love is the upapati. And that woman who ignores the rules of marriage and ignores dharma concerning this world and the next and gives herself to another man is called the parakya. The parakya may be single or married, but it's one who gives her heart completely. Generally, Parakya refers to uh, a married woman who gives her heart to Krishna, but she may be single also, meaning younger and hasn't been married yet. Vijay Kumar says, what are the qualities of the Swakya? Goswami says, the Swakya is known as the woman who attains her lover by marriage, such as Rukmini. She abides by her husband's orders, and does not deviate from vows to her husband, properly married. Vijay Kumar says, who are the Swakya and the Parakya women of Braj? Goswami says, the women of the city are Krishna's Swakyas, and the women of Braj are his Parakyas. Vijay Kumar asks, how are these two types of women situated in the unmanifested pastimes? Gopal Guru says, this is a deep topic. You know that Krishna has four vibhutis, four parts. Among them, three are the spiritual world, and one part is the material world. We consider the, the material world to be uh, one part 
Whereas the entire spiritual world being unlimited, but we consider like three parts, 75%, 25%. The Viraja River flows between the material universe and the spiritual world. Beyond the Viraj, which is the point of demarcation, is the spiritual world. One has to cross that Viraj River to enter into the spiritual domain. The wall surrounding this material universe is the Brahman filled with light. Piercing that, one sees the Vaikuntha, that we call the spiritual sky. Uh, and within the spiritual sky are the Vaikuntha planets, the Paravyoma. In Vaikuntha, the Aishvarya or the uh, majestic as aspects of God are seen. Narayan, the king of king, he's served by unlimited spiritual wealth. The Lord has Swakya Ras are married in Vaikuntha. Uh, he, his consorts are she, Bu, and Nila. His Shakti serve him as Swakya women. But above Vaikuntha is Golok. The women of that city within Golok, the environment called Golok, is Dwarka. They also serve him as Swakya. In Golok, the women of Braj serve Krishna in their own Ras. Vijay Kumar said, if Golok is the highest abode of Krishna, then why is Braj said to have so much astonishing glory? Goswami says, Mathura Mandala can be divided into three. Braj, Gokul, and Vrindavan. Mathura Mandala and Golok are the same tatra. The one entity situated as the highest place, Golok, becomes Mathura Mandala in the material world. We see the, the area, the mandala we call, or the area of Mathura includes um, Golok or Gokul and, and Vrindavan, Govardhan, like that. It is famous in these forms simultaneously. The spiritual aspect and that which is seen on the earth. Vijay Kumar says, I cannot understand how this is possible. Goswami says, the situation exists by Krishna's achintya, inconceivable potencies. Everything is possible for Krishna, but what is not understandable by us, the jiva, we say is achintya, impossible to understand. It goes beyond logic within the material mind. So we call it achintya shakti, inconceivable. The objects of the achintya shakti are beyond comprehension and logic. What is called Golok becomes Mathura Dham in the material world during the Prakat or the manifested pastimes when Krishna appears here. Then that area uh, is called the Prakat, where Krishna manifests his pastimes and enacts them for the purpose of blessing those who are here within the, within the earth realm. The Aprakat, which we say unmanifest pastimes, is that which are beyond our purview, and they reside, that resides in Golok, Krishna's spiritual uh, domain. Krishna's spiritual pastimes are eternal. The person who is qualified to see spiritual things may see Golok. They can even see Golok within Gokul. That is, even those who are highly qualified, they go to Vrindavan, the area of Gokul, we say, uh, Krishna's place, Gokul, they see the eternal realm, which is called Golok. Here it is called Gokul, there it is called Golok. The person whose intelligence is restricted, though, by matter, will not see Golok. Though Gokul in this world and Golok are the same, that person sees only the material Gokul. He only sees the, what the eyes can see, the uh, Vrindavan of this world, the, uh, forms that still remain there. Jamuna River is flowing here. Uh, uh, here is the Govardhan Hill. Here is the Radhakun. When, when one uh, is highly qualified, he may see the same things, but in its highly spiritual form. Oh, what is the qualification to see Golok? Goshani says, Shukadev has said, thus deeply considering the situation, the all-merciful Supreme Lord revealed to the coward men his abode beyond Prakriti. Only by Krishna's blessing can we see that. Krishna revealed the place 
which was real, cognizant, infinite, eternal, and self-effulgent, sages see that place in trance when their consciousness is free from the modes of material nature. One cannot see Golok except by Krishna's mercy. Being merciful, Krishna showed Golok to the inhabitants of Braj. That is, he showed that this is the spiritual world to them. Uh, while they were enacting their pastimes, it appears, in, in many ways, it appears uh, uh, similar to the material world because this material world is a reflection of that divine abode. So even to the eyes of some, it appeared who were existing in the eternal realm to be material. And then he, Krishna gave them the pastime of showing this is the spiritual world. The variety there is eternally existing. It is unlimited spiritual manifestation. Brahman, spiritual life, exists as the effulgence eternally. When a devotee is devoid of all contact with matter, material relationships, he sees that special tattva. Vijay Kumar asks, can all the liberated souls see Golok? Goswami says, among millions of liberated persons, a devotee of the Lord is rare. If we take everyone and consider who is liberated, there may be, by uh, following various paths, they have become liberated from the cycle of birth and death. But those who are actually devotees are rare. Those who obtain liberation on the path of impersonal gyan or the, through the path of astanga yoga may experience uh, forgetfulness of the atma in Brahman. There are devotees attracted to the Aishraya, the opulent aspect. They also cannot see Golok. They serve a majestic form, according to the bhav of their hearts, within Vaikuntha. Among those who worship Krishna with Brajras, those who become liberated from the endless bondage of Maya by Krishna's mercy, they can see Golok. Vijay Kumar asks, if no one except liberated devotees can see Golok, why do the scriptures such as Brahma Sanghita describe it? Goswami says, those devotees who appreciate Braj Ras, whom Krishna elevates to Golok, can see Golok completely. Among those pure devotees of Braj, some can see Golok slightly. There are two types of devotees, the Siddha and the Sadaka, the perfected soul and the uh, practitioner, the Sadaka. The sadhaka is not qualified to see Golok. He sees it through Shastra. He understands the, the nature of the spiritual world through his studies and so forth. He aspires for that attainment. He engages in, in devotional activities with the focus to achieve that. But he does not see it with his spiritual eye. The siddhas, though, they, have, they can experience that. Those with Vastu Siddha are brought to Golok directly by Krishna's mercy. Sarup Siddha devotees see the Sarup of Golok, but they are not brought to Golok from the material world by Krishna's mercy. By Krishna's mercy, their devotional eyes gradually open. They have many types of qualification. Some see a little, some see more, some see even more, varying degrees. To the extent that Krishna shows mercy to his devotee, to that extent they see the actual Golok. As long as they are in the stage of sadhana, their vision of Golok is slightly tinged with maya because they're uh, still under the sways of the material energy. So naturally, there's some mayak influence there. If one gives up sadhana and attains bhav, one can see Golok to some degree. At the stage of Prem, one can see Golok to the highest degree. Uh, that is, as the spiritual eyes or the spiritual heart opens more and more. Oh, Prabhu, tell me, what is the difference then between Golok and Braj? Goswami says, whatever one sees in Braj is also in Golok. According to the faith of the seer, they, there will be some differences in what is seen. Actually, Golok and Vrindavan are not different. One sees difference only because of the eyes of the beholder. person in Tamas, for instance, sees everything in Braj's material. A person in Raj 
sees everything slightly better. His eyes are a little bit more open. Person in Sattva Gun sees the Shuddha Sattva to the degree of his seeing power. Therefore, everyone's qualification is different. Thus, they see differently. It's not that everyone who goes to the Dham sees the same Dham. They see in accordance with their eyes being open spiritually. Vijay Kumar said, Oh Prabhu, I understand a little, but please give a few more examples. Krishna said, It is a difficult topic, and it is forbidden to reveal the realizations of secrets. By Krishna's mercy, what you can see should be kept secret at all times. I will speak what the previous acharyas have revealed, and you will see what else remains only by Krishna's mercy. One perceives Golok with pure spirit, that is, pure spiritual eyes. Just like when Krishna uh, revealed the uh, universal form to Arjuna. It takes Krishna's blessing to see that universal form. What to speak of the most intimate realm of Krishna's? That Golok Dham. You need Krishna's mercy. How else can you see that? Therefore, uh, everything is dependent upon the mercy of Krishna. And the whole process of Krishna consciousness, or the sadhanas of our Krishna conscious practice, is to draw Krishna's mercy into our life. Because the more we aspire for that, that we've discussed before, that transcendental greed within the heart, uh, then Krishna reveals that more and more. How much do you desire it? That is what has to be understood. And that desire for Krishna increases as we associate prop with proper devotees, hear properly, chant properly. That is our sadhana, to increase our desire to know and to love Krishna more and more. And the more we know and the more we love Krishna uh, by our practice, then Krishna's mercy is revealed. And that light of transcendental knowledge uh, becomes brighter and brighter. And we can see everything in its proper conception then. Vijay Kumar asks, should one meditate on subject matters of the Eightfold Pastimes, the Asta Kaliya Lila, after purifying themselves? That is, there is a sadhana to remember Krishna, especially those who live in Braj should practice this, because they live in the Dham, and they can they have the time in the... Um, uh, Methods of meditation by remembering Krishna throughout the eight portions of the day. But uh, Goswami says one should remember the eightfold pastimes just as one sees them. When Krishna's mercy manifests by the strength of bhajan, the pastimes will appear in the heart. There is no necessity of purifying the bhav of the pastimes by one's own effort. One can hear, one can chant, one can remember but the opening of the heart will all take place by Krishna's arrangement. Vijay Kumar asks, according to how one meditates during sadhana, one gains the result. There seems to be a necessity of meditating on Golok in a pure way. Guru Goswami says, yes, this is true. All that is perceived in Braj is based upon pure tattva. Nothing there is the opposite. It has the opposite, if it has opposite qualities, it would be faulty. When one sadhana is pure, one obtains the perfect result. One will perceive the abode then of full perfection. Please perform actions so that the actions of your sadhana are done nicely. Do not attempt to purify the pastimes by material, you cannot do that by material, uh, adjusting the mind. You can hear them and don't try to uh, think of them uh, tinged with your material mind. Just hear them. Let them purify your heart. Uh, know that during this portion of the day, Krishna is doing this, Krishna is doing that. And remember Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Chant his name. Hear his pastimes and purify your heart. Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. This is the path of spiritual perfection given to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Vijay Kumar said, oh, today I've been truly fortunate. Uh, hearing all of this from you 
makes one's fortune. In other words, to hear from one's guru about such things uh, certainly purifies the heart. And as as Vijay Kumar previously prayed last time, Oma Gan Timirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshirin Militam Jaina Tazmai Shi Gurve Namaha that by the mercy of Guru, the heart becomes cleansed and the eyes open spiritually by true transcendental wisdom. And uh, true transcendental wisdom is to know the proper path of sadhana and to practice that in the proper way. Vijay Kumar says, Oh, do all the pastimes of Parakya that are seen in Braj occur in Golok in the same order of time? Goshani says, they have the same order, but there is no portion under Maya. Though the influence of Maya does not exist, there is pure spiritual root to a perception of a sequence of time. So even in the Dham, there's a sense of time. It's not material time. Material time is deteriorating. But spiritual time constantly increases one's absorption and love for the Lord, ever increasing never decreasing, ever increasing. Material world decreases, spiritual world increases. So that is the difference of that spiritual time. So yes, uh, there may be seen that there is a morning uh, and the Lord wakes up at a particular time, goes through a certain sequence of things, taking his bath, eating his breakfast and so forth. Uh, t tending to the cows then, later after, after breakfast time, so many different things go on. Yeah, there is a succession, just as we have our day and we have our night. But that is purely spiritual, never decreasing, ever expanding. That natural love for Krishna ever expands in that transcendental time. Goshani continues, Braj pastimes are eternal. They are present like a rotating wheel, since the pastimes perceived in the present are taking place also somewhere else in the unlimited universes. These things are going on always, either in the spiritual world and even in the material world. They are rotating from one, one uh, planetary system to another. In this way, Prakat pastimes are seen as eternal. Vijay Kumar says, if the pastimes are in all universes, then in each universe there is the Braj Dham. Yes. Gopal Gurusami says, yes. There's a Braj Dham in all of the universes. By Krishna's mercy, uh, no one is uh, uh, prohibited. Everyone is welcome to enter into that reality. Krishna is all accommodating. And he's inviting us all by leaving us his Dham, leaving us his name, leaving us his recorded pastimes, such as in the Srimad Bhagavatam, so that we can enter into that reality. Goswami says, Golok is self-manifesting. In all the universe, it is present as place of pastimes. Golok is also manifesting within the hearts of the devotee, not only in a certain location, but always in the location of the pure devotee's heart. Vijay Kumar says, does Mathura Mandala remain manifest when the pastimes of the uppercut uh, when the pastimes are apricot in the universe, when they manifest here, in that place, the apricot pastimes are eternally present. The Dham remains there, being merciful to devotees rising, uh, residing there. Krishna may see, be seen to be leaving this world through his various leelas of departure from this world, but he leaves his abode. And devotees gather there. Why? Because they feel the spiritual energy of that transcendental Braj Dham. Just as we want to gather near a pure devotee because we understand his heart is Braj. We, we want to go to Vrindavan because that is the place of Krishna's pastimes and we can feel it. And the more we, of course, as mentioned here, the more we become spiritual in our own heart, the more we realize the power of the potency of the pure devotee, the power of the potency of that transcendental Dham called Vrindavan. The Dham remains there, being merciful to the devotees who reside there. That was the end of the discussion on that day. Vijay Kumar, now contemplating the Eightfold Pastimes, returned to his residence. Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Radhe Shyam.